Welcome 3D Modeling students. In this video we're going to continue learning 3D Max by creating this little scene of a ring toss toy. And after we create the basic scene we're going to composite our toy into another scene like we did with our 3D text. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is create a project folder. So let's go to File, Create a Project, Create Default. And then we're going to go to our class folder here. It should be in your OneDrive class folder. And then inside here, you're going to create a new folder. I'm going to name it Toy. And push Enter. And then that folder should still be selected. And you're just going to click Select Folder. And next, we're going to come to the Create tab here. Make sure we have ge Geometry and Standard Primitives selected and we're going to create a box. This is going to be the base of our toy. So I want you to click in your viewport and drag out sort of a rectangular box. Let go and drag up to make it kind of thin, like a board. And then we're going to go straight to the Modify tab and we're going to look at our board base here and sort of adjust it if we need to. Now let's center this in our scene. It's always helpful when you're modeling to have everything centered in the 3D world. So to center this, let's go to the Move tool. And then we're going to look down here below the timeline and find the X, Y, and Z coordinates. And we're going to right click on the spinner for each one to zero it out. And that centers it in the 3D world. Now let's create the pegs. Let's go back to the Create tab. And we're going to use cylinders this time. Now I'm just going to click here. It doesn't really matter where it is at this point because I'm going to show you how to line it up. And then we're going to go straight to the Create tab, I mean the Modify tab, and adjust the radius and the height to make sure it looks correct. Now because this board is centered in the 3D scene, we can center this with the board very easily by getting the Move tool again and zeroing out its X, Y, and Z coordinates and that centers it on the board because the board is centered in the world as well. And then let's move the peg in the X or Y axis depending on how your board is oriented so that it's over to one side and in the center of the board. And now we need to create another peg. So to create another peg we could just create another one and then adjust it. But we can also clone things in 3D Max very easily. All we have to do is hold down shift when we move or rotate or scale an object and that will create a copy. And then you just click OK. And you can see now we have one that's exactly like the other one. Uh, we can also create multiple copies if I hold down shift and drag and then I just enter something here then that creates a number of copies spaced like the first one was. So now let's create our rings. We're going to go to the Create tab, and this time we're going to select Taurus. And I'm just going to click anywhere and start dragging out a, a ring. I'll try to make sure it's about correct in terms of its uh, scale. Then we're going to go straight to the Modify tab, and I'm going to adjust it if I need to. I think I'll give this one some more segments, smooth it out a little bit. Now I want to align this ring with one of my pegs. I could try to move it and align it, but there's also a feature in 3D Max called Quick Align. And the shortcut for that is Shift A. So click on the ring, hit Shift A, and then your cursor will change to a little lightning bolt with a line, and then click the peg that you want to align that torus to. And you will see that it centers it, but it puts it in the ground so we need to raise it up in the z-axis so it sits right on the board. Now it centers it by pivot point and the pivot point of the cylinder is at the bottom that's why it put it where it did. 
Now we want multiple rings, so I'm going to do the same trick we did with the cylinder. I'm going to hold down Shift and then drag up in the Z-axis to create a copy and make sure that it's sort of sitting on the ring, not up here like this, but sitting on the ring below it. And when the window pops up this time, I'm going to make five copies. Now I want my rings to get smaller as they go up. So I'm going to select the second one, and then I'm going to come over here to the Modify tab, and in its parameters I'm going to adjust Radius 1 to make it a little smaller than the one below it. And I'm just going to do that for each one. Now to complete the objects in this scene, we want some blocks to put on the base. So let's go to the Create tab and we're going to create a box. doesn't really matter what shape it is at this point because I'm going to go to the Modify tab and I'm going to make sure that these numbers are all the same. I think I'll try 12 by 12 by 12. That looks about right. Then I'm going to move this over and move it up so it's sitting on the base. Move it over to one side a little bit, and I'm going to hold down Shift and create a copy. Then I'm going to hold down Shift and put one on top, and maybe put it between the two, like so. Now I want these blocks to look a little more random than they are. I don't want them to be perfectly aligned with each other, so I want it to look a little more natural. So I'm going to use my Rotate tool to give them some randomness. Select one of your blocks and get the Rotate tool, and then rotate in the Z-axis, like so, so that they're sort of look like they were just randomly placed. And then let's save our scene, go to File, Save As, and name it Toy and it will save it in the 3DMA toy folder, scenes folder that you created. You can see that here. And in the next video, we're going to add some colors to our objects. And I'll see you then.